but um,
Okay, we're ready to get started. You good? Okay. Could we uh, could we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to get started? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we've kind of started, this is a habit, but we'll continue because it seems to help. We can just go around real quick and have everybody just introduce themselves and then we'll get started. Mark Marshall. Hey, Mark. Melanie Marshall. Uh, Julie Mason. Don Frost. Bob Maudlin. Bonnie Richards. Chad Richards. George Morris. Bill Blonde. Kevin Grossi. Ed Graham. John Webber. Dan Horn. Don Norris. Eric Fox. All right, Jerry Gizzards, our contextual and judicial committees. All right, Jerry, thanks. Wait a minute. Rick Paul. Danny Winnie, Tom. It's not my to have anybody on the candidate for trustee in the work. By about 95% of the value of So I'm going to myself and I'm going to give me All right, thank, thank you. you. Welcome. Howard Whitson. Jim Sutton. Jim. All right. I think everybody knows us, good or bad, right? Yeah. All right. All right. I'll start off with the uh, president's report. So good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending our first board meeting of 2022, both in person and those folks that are online with us. Uh, we've got a lot to accomplish this year, and we'll do our best to keep you informed on goals, tasks, and our progress as we move forward. A little housekeeping to start. Um, we're asking everybody to sign in. I think Dave started a board. Sometimes when we listen to the recording and people have questions and comments, we have a hard time picking up the name and the lot number. So please do your name and lot number when you're um, making a comment, but please do sign in. So we've got a great way of getting back in contact with somebody if we have any follow up especially with a, a crowd this size. So we appreciate you doing that. And hopefully that'll make it easier um, throughout the meeting for you and us as we follow up. So on new business, a couple things. Uh, Dave Wisman will be talking about the upcoming board election and his community manager report in that process. But I wanted to thank Brian Bays. I don't think Brian is here, is he? No, I don't think I missed him. And Ken Horn, who is here, uh, for su submitting their names as candidates. Um, guys, if you have any questions of me or any other board member, uh, please let Dave, Dave Wisman and or Jenny Boyer know. And if you have any questions that, that will be helpful, we're glad to respond back, but we'll respond back to both of you just to keep the election fair. So we welcome any questions you may have. So to you guys, uh, good luck. And uh, we appreciate the time you're investing and the care that you'll provide for the community during this process and beyond. We will be officially starting the leadership council that we've been talking about for a while in the March, April time period. Next week, we'll have a specific date and those invites will go out. Um, the idea behind that is to discuss community needs on an ongoing basis with more involvement with the committees and the clubs and to be able to collaborate on those topics across the committees, 
the club's board and our employee staff just to keep a better pulse on what, what folks are thinking about as they interact day to day. One of those topics that we'll be addressing right out of the get-go in, in a bit of a workshop environment is the process for committee members. How do they get selected? What's the process for communicating it? Uh, possible term limits that people have asked about roles and responsibilities within each of the committees. And while we'll work towards a standard across all of them, each committee and club is a little bit unique, but we at least want to have a consistent standard process across all of them that everybody feels feels good about. So that's, um, th those invites will go out next week and we'll, we'll get that started. The other piece I wanted to talk about is we, we get a lot of questions about activity going on in committee meetings. Some, some clubs and committees have great minutes, some do them sometimes, not the other, but in the spirit of making sure everybody's aware of what's being worked on, if you're interested in something or you just wanna update that goes beyond what we do here, we're gonna try to pull those minutes together and I'll send an email out to all the clubs and uh, committee chairs. We just wanna submit those when you have them complete and wanna move towards putting them on the website so at any point in time, if you want to understand what's going on in the committee, early stage, late stage, you've got some place to see that information. So that's just kind of bringing that out in the, in the forefront. And then the last piece I have um, on older, older business, and there were some comments made today on, on social media, which we always enjoy, but uh, we will not be exploring further the Miller Park uh, lots for development. We are, however, limiting the dock rental this year. Uh, due to safety concerns. We've had some people that want to stay there. We've looked at language around liability. So we're protecting those folks. But long term, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and determine what upgrades, what capital do we have available to make it a safer place to use. It's interesting watching some of the comments on social media today. Some people don't even understand where it is. So I'm one of them. Yeah. So but that that is and the other thing I would say, I never intended to be an infringement on green space. That was not the idea. I won't go into why we brought it up in the first place, but it's brought up publicly for a reason. We did our due diligence. We listened. We did deep legal review. And even though we have different approaches we can take, it was pretty clear that um, people would rather have other, other things done with that property. And if we can find a way to improve it so it's safer and, and more useful for everybody, we'll try to find a way. But that that is now officially old business. Okay. Could I ask at least what, what the event was? Yeah. So, so just the clarification, my wife asked. And I yeah, no problem. So it's been a safety issue for a while. And if you go walk that property, it's not the it's not the easiest thing to correct for a few bucks. And so we just had a conversation amongst the group one day about is there other things that we can do? We're not interested in going on this big rampage of green space because we all know we enjoy it. You guys enjoy it. The community enjoys it. But it was also going on at the same time during the budget process when we knew for 2022 and beyond we needed to shore up our, our expenses in the community. So the idea started with we knew what we were going to do in terms of a dues increase once we did the analysis as well as the cost of the amenities. And long term, because we've got some big items, you face the reality of where's those dollars going to come from. You're not going to fix the things that need to be fixed because you don't have the money or you have to raise dues or you have to do an assessment or there's this piece of property that's not being used in a big way. What if we sold the property and took the revenue from it and applied it against projects that need to be done? That's how it got started. Okay. I, I, I just didn't yep. understand this. I also know that you know with a lot of the overages that are paid based on the golf course, that those end up going to the golf course at the end of the year that really could have offset some of those funds needs. Um, so you know we pay forty-five dollars each you know year right. to pay for the, the golf course. Right. So based on debt. And the, the operation, anything that's left over goes to golf course, correct? At the end of the year. So, I don't to that. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the way that the way it was agreed upon and voted upon in in no, six, I was I was on the vote. Okay, so the agreement was anything that's above and beyond the mortgage payment would go towards the golf course for operating capital. Yeah, and but we also wanted it to be profitable. So if somebody's looking for dollars, let's look for them 
across the board. Sure. And not go digging up additional money when we have money that's available. Correct. Okay. Come on. I mean, like, yeah, this uh, but, is my first time here in yeah. a long time. Yeah. So I would say, and I love the golf course, but if we're supporting the golf course instead of digging into the rest of the community's funds, we should be looking at those areas where we have additional capital that could be used. So, so what you're at, what you're asking is, will we look at taking excess cash at the golf course and applying it somewhere else? Is that what you're asking? Okay. The excess cash is not intended to keep the golf course afloat. The excess cash was to make sure that we paid the mortgage on the golf course. The golf course was supposed to be self sustained. End of story. If we are putting funds into the golf course, and I, I'm a golfer, but we're putting those funds into the golf course instead of saying, Look, the rest of the community, rather than raising your dues, these extra funds need to go to these other expenses, not to the golf course. Well, I mean, I'm just going back. That was the original agreement. So, I mean, we can yeah. we can change that or, yeah. but it's I mean, not, it's not rocket science, guys. It's not. Well, that I mean, that's how the community voted. The community voted that it would be solvent on its own, not to support it with excess funds that come out of my dues. And then for you to stand here and tell me that you have to increase these because you don't know where the money could come from, you did not look at those dollars as money where the dues could come from, correct? Did you even consider it? I don't think, I don't think without a full review of the budget and we've, we've in subsequent meetings prior to this one spent a lot of time this fall on the budget where the issues were what we're trying to it's tackle a, it's a simple question no but my, my point is unless you're willing to dig in and understand the budget process with it which we're happy to share it's all oh, transparent please, oh. I completely understand the budget process. okay more than okay. I'm just asking you in a public forum to consider, I mean, well, we all want to, I don't want to make this uncomfortable. Yeah, I, and I think one one thing we would approach would be to pay down debt with that money. I would rather so, pay down debt and we, early. We, we, we've talked about that. And cover expenses that they couldn't. Yeah, cover. so we also, and you may know this, we were able to renegotiate the loan from four and a half to, to three and a half percent. We Which didn't, awesome. yeah, and we didn't take the lower, Payment. We right. kept actually raised the actual monthly payment to pay down the debt about six or seven months sooner. So that's already been in place. I think that's awesome. That's, that's yeah. absolutely wonderful. I guess I was trying to point out from a person who does not attend these hearings often, I chose to do this after 20 years because I see that we raised the dues, but may not have considered all options. Okay. Okay. Well, just didn't well, yeah. So, right. so you're, so you're right to state that. That's your feelings. That's not my feeling. It's a fact. No, but we also have the right, and we'd be glad to take you deeper into the budgets. We probably went through one of the most thorough budget processes we've had in a while. And if you want to go in great detail as all the things that we looked at, you're, you're saying we didn't do. We're happy to share more. There's no. Then I'm not following you. Okay. I did not consider. Mm -hmm. Access funds that we do the forty-five dollar a month, or not or forty-five dollar a year amount. You didn't consider that as a source of funds for your budget. Okay. Okay, but I think you're missing the point that. You're missing said, the point that you did not consider it as a source. But you're missing the agreement. Now we're going to move on. You're missing the agreement that was put in place when we there. when we when we voted on it. Was. They were supposed so. to be solvent. And no, there was nothing in writing that I signed as, uh, that said any excess money was going to go to the golf course to cover anything. That was not, show me that in writing. Show me that in writing. Anybody else want anything before we move on? That I'm, didn't I'm, happen. 
you were you were there for that I, part. Yes, yes. Right? I, I was the the, the one uh, making that commitment. Um, I would have to go back, sir, and look at the slides. But I I conducted each of the town halls we had, and the and the verbal statement that I made was that it was ninety dollars a year. It's forty five dollars every six months. That any difference between what we had to pay on the mortgage and what we collected, because keep in mind, we don't continuously collect from 100% of our community. So we promised that those excess dollars would go to the golf course, which would be for the length of the loan. It's a 15 year loan. And Dave's hard work and renegotiated renegotiating it did not lengthen the term. As a matter of fact, we're shortening it. But I would actually have to go back to the slide presentation, which I still have, to see if what I was saying was actually matched by what was on the slide behind me. So the slide is what you're, what you're holding on to? I think that that's something that is pretty valuable to hold on to, quite frankly. it If it was on the slide, it was indeed was in writing. That the, that yes. The board signed off to buy the property. That is correct. And to take out a loan of X. Correct. And if a slide is all we have to say the excess funds we're going to go back to them, and mm -hmm. that's all we've got, mm -hmm. I'd say that's pretty sloppy business. Bring back, especially given our budget. And so, so just so I make sure I've heard you. so. For the record, so we can go back, review, talk about as a board. What is your recommendation moving forward? My recommendation is that you actually consider all available funds that we, as a community, pay in our dues. And that you don't ignore some slide or gentleman's or gentlewoman's agreement to cover the additional expenses because some of us might have decided that we should have just kept the property as it was and then maybe consider selling it for development not, and not keeping it as golf course because if it can't stay on its own and I'm gonna, I, this, this is crazy I don't want to re resurrect a multi, you know several years of discussion about the golf course I'm just asking you as the board, to recognize you did not consider that as a source. And if you can do that, I'll shut the heck up. I did, my, my last comment, we'll move on. I don't understand how you can make the statement without really understanding the entire budget process. I don't understand it, I'm sorry. You, and I'll be glad to under, understand it. I call that this stuff. Okay, you're entitled to your opinion. It is not opinion. Any other questions? Fact. Thank you. Any other questions on that? Yeah, yeah can I, um, someone on Zoom yeah, chime in? Go ahead, go ahead. In regard to the possible sale of the Bullock property? Yeah. That the committee would explore uh, all possible probabilities and possibilities of placing covenants and restrictions on that property. Okay. With community input. Okay. So the short version is there are they are in place, but there's also a lot of work we did with our legal team to understand what's in place, what's expired, what's still protected with those covenants. And we've done that due diligence. And we took the rec the final recommendation from our attorneys, which candidly, there were differences of opinions within the same office. We asked for a final recommendation that, that could guide us. And the highlight of that recommendation is that those green spaces are protected and we're not looking to sell them. But understand we operate with the information from our attorneys at the time we raised the question, is this a possibility? And candidly, we had different information that was delivered to us than the final recommendation that we acted on. What was the outcome? You mentioned possible sale. Is that being considered or will it no, be considered? No, this first statement I made is we're no. not selling Muller Park and we don't have interest in reducing green green belts. Okay, thank you. And green spaces. Yep. Sure, Ken, I go just ahead. I've got a quick question. Ken Horn 2790. Yep. You said the covenants or whatever. 
You said, you're saying that you have chosen not to sell green space. Correct. Is the law is the law agreeing that you're not allowed to sell? Is that the bottom line? That's that's the that's the recommendation overall for green space. Molder Park was a separate issue, and I won't go into the detail because we need to get on with the rest of the agenda. But the whole reason we entertained it is we were, were given information that suggested that we could sell that property, that that property was unique to the rest of the green belts based on the language that was in place. So basically all of our green space is protected and it cannot be sold. Correct. That's all right. I, just mm -hmm. want, I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah, yeah I just don't want anybody, there's, you know, stuff takes over on social media and the facts aren't there. We're trying to share as much as we can. Excuse me, John? The facts weren't given. So, I mean, the, the, it wasn't totally explained in some ways. Okay. Beforehand, it was. Okay. Yeah, Mark, go ahead. Then we got one more. We're going to move you on. You say there is a plan to address the safety issue there? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, you don't have to explain it. To no, you. I do. Just, I do want to explain it because okay. if I don't explain it, somebody's going to start something on social media that says we're never going to fix it. Here's our reality. We went through a detailed budget process last year to understand what we can continue to do and what we can't fund to try to balance the budget. And we're gonna get into more detail too in the finance report that I'll deliver our finance folks are here about the work that's being done to look at accruals over the next three to five years and make sure we're covered for not only what we've always taken care of, but what we've added, right? So that as a part of that process, we've said, we are gonna stop getting into this it's, it's a community member or a club or a committee or whoever that's got this great idea of adding something. When we, when we finish the budget process in the fall, we have funded the projects for next year. And unless something drastically changes with expenses, we know what we're gonna work on. So as it pertains to Molar Park, we don't have funds in place to address this year. But when we roll around the budget process, we'll, which will start like August, September, October, part of our, and, and I address the leadership council, we want to do a better job of listening to what's coming up from the committees and what they think capital should be spent on other than normal maintenance. Like what are those projects? Because we get caught and we think we've done the right thing. And then somebody attends a, a committee meeting. The next thing we know, what if we had $50,000, we could do this. Well, we're willing to listen, but this budget process this year is over. So we know long-term that we have to do something or completely shut it down. And Dave, Dave spent the time going back to the folks that are renting saying, we're not, we don't have budget this year to fix it and looked at the liability coverage to make sure we don't put the POA at risk. And so you're, you're using the existing docs at your risk. We will look at it as a potential project next year along with everything else. And we're either long-term gonna have to correct it or stop renting completely. And it's truly just a green space, walk at your own risk. I don't know that that makes sense, but especially this proximity where it's at, but it's something that I don't, I don't want to say got ignored, but there's projects that raise up that people start talking about. You, you start looking at them, you go, yeah, this probably isn't where it should be to be running docks. So it's going to have to be looked at, but it's not budgeted for this year. Is all green space used at your own Great question. I would say sure. Yeah. yeah. I think the difference is, this is just me speaking, I'm not speaking, I have the board and they can speak up. You're talking about property that sits right on the lake off a of main road next to other homes. And it's, it's, it's a challenging piece, but to answer your question. Yes, it sure is. Okay. All right. One other question that we're about. No, no? I, I, statement. Yeah. Green space cannot be so, it cannot be developed. Right. Right. I guess you Maybe pads can put in there, but you can't develop it. I'm not too sure about the pads, but can't, beyond that, can't be developed at all. Did you say, Bill, did you say pads? Uh, pads. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry to hear it. Yeah. 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 One yeah. time somebody talked about, and, and question came up, and maybe that's not possible. Okay. It's got to be just blended the way it is. Yeah, we definitely have some work to do. I mean, it's a big piece of property that's in a high traffic area and being utilized. Okay. All right.
so Jeff Fuel is not here, unfortunately, due to, due to work conflict. So I'm going to all stay very, very high level and include some of the statements that he left. Financial position for the month of December of 21, our cash position as of December 1st was 440, 752.97 cents. The ending cash on December 31st of 21 was 426, 686. The financial position for the month of January of 22, our cash position on January 1st, 426, 686. And our ending cash on January 31st of 22 is 999, 624, and 81 cents. The only other thing I'll highlight, because uh, Kyle Packer is not available tonight, he's traveling with the Finance Committee, just to let, let everybody know what they're working on. This tends to be kind of a slow, slow time of the year for that group. They don't have year-end numbers for December, so there's nothing to report on there. And then we also have our audit process going on currently. There's some folks that don't realize we have an audit process for checks and balances we do that gets concluded at the end of April. So those are, that's kind of where that group is right now and just a little bit of a slow time till we get caught up in the numbers. Okay. Uh, Name and lot number, please. Lot number 85, Bill, will you do me a favor? You grab the mic because nobody else can hear on our recording. We want to make sure everybody can hear this. <laughs> okay, uh, my question, and I ask this in November with from Kyle. I want to know how much I am paying for Rumpke. Okay, and nobody's gotten that. Okay, I'll ask you. Years ago. Okay, I, I know the background, just in fairness. Okay. I was under understanding that it was addressed. If it's not, Dave, will you help me with a note on that? Okay. And, and get those yeah. numbers back to you. Uh, another question on the uh, budget. What is a uh, board sponsored expenses for twenty thousand dollars? We'll have to answer it right now. Okay. Well, actually, Bill, I can answer fifteen thousand okay. of that. <laughs> I I can't speak to the other five. Um, the fifteen thousand was budgeted for the fiftieth anniversary. Okay. celebration so okay. we we started spending that money back in 2021 20, uh, with the pioneer reception mercifully we didn't get the invoice for that till january so we we're settling that in this fiscal year uh we expect to come in under that fifteen thousand. okay mm -hmm. okay another thing the expense is two hundred eighty five thousand dollars for the sheets rumpy income is a dollar Somebody screw up for a second. Sounds like it. Huh? Sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One final thing. Escrow account. We set up an escrow account years ago so that we can determine the priorities of things that were more important Correct. and set aside that fund for that. Uh, I would like a copy of that and also priority and how much each item costs. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, with the, the financials are fully okay. exposed. Everybody well, that wants the financials it. are supposed to be in the echoes and they never have appeared here for a, a quite a while. You sure? The last couple of they're in the echoes and they're also yeah. posted online. And if you don't see them, no, no, bear with me. If you don't see them yeah, because I was wonder how we bought that big machine for the light. I don't what know, what did, big, get on, did we buy the, the did no, we, no, 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 we didn't buy that yet. No. Okay, no. excuse no. me. Um, it's okay. I got pie in my face. <laughs> uh, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, so, my wondering is how in the hell did that get ahead of all the items on the escrow? Okay, so the last okay. thing I'll leave you with, did. and I, did, I didn't mention it from Kyle's notes, the number one thing they're working on right now is the three to five year escrow. And as you can imagine, that takes estimating everything we have, how we take care of it. And, it, years and it's, it's, been, it's been a refund. You, you should come back. No. We'll, we'll go back. <laughs> I'm, 80, I'm 86 no. years old. I get and then I'm going to ask you, where's that dollar? Isn't that a typo? No. <laughs> so all, all fair questions. But, but Bill, the thing I want to share with you, because I know you like to ask these questions and they're all fair. If you don't understand something and you want more detail, come in the office and see Dave. There's more numbers and more backup 
Dave, I'm sorry. <laughs> you were laughing at me. That's why. But seriously, just come come in. Like I hear, okay. I hear, okay. I hear comments all the time. There's no audit. But There's no it, checks and balances. Like I there, know, but it's like a jail anymore. Scott. It's a jail. Don't come then. I'm sorry. They won't let me out. You're right. They won't let you out. All right. Pat, yes, secretary. Yeah, uh -huh. thank you. but I have a motion to approve our meeting minutes from December of 2021. So, motion. Thank second. you, Dave. Yep. You get to be second, Steve. Uh, any questions or comments from anyone in attendance about the meeting minutes? All in favor of accepting the December meeting minutes as written? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. David first, sure. Sorry, I just wanted to uh, announce that the jail. I'm going to mean Dave. I'm going to get out of your way. <laughs> the jail is open. <laughs> or it's jail, closed. The jail office. I'm going to get out of your way because you've got a lot of slides. No bail. <laughs> David, we're, we're not closing at noon again on Fridays. Uh, we'll monitor office traffic. Traffic and make adjustments during busy times if necessary. Uh, regarding the election, we have two candidates running for one board position being vacated by Dave Hafner. Um, our next steps are uh, the candidate bios and photos are published in Echoes, which is uh, coming to a new stand near you. Uh, ballots will be mailed out by the 21st of March. April 18th is the election uh, deadline date and the ballots must be returned to the office. And that can be either by mail or in person. Um, so please vote early. I'm not going to say vote often, just vote early. <laughs> so, uh, Dave, can I just ask a question? Because we had this issue come up at the early part of the process. When you say mail, what does that mean? We go okay. out to the mailbox at the end of the day okay. and take everything out of the mailbox. Okay. And, and those are deposited in the uh, ballot box. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so security, um, we have had a shortage of deputies working in Hidge Valley recently. You may have noticed that uh, maybe a uh, police car hasn't moved or something like that. At this time, I have uh, two deputies or two uh, police officers here who are working for us as security. They're driving their own personal vehicle, being paid mileage. Uh, we are retrofitting a uh, one of the uh, cars that we were taking out of service. Uh, it'll have amber lights on and we'll say security. Uh, this is a short-term situation, but in case we run into this again, I wanna be prepared for it. Uh, part of this is due to the overall shortage of police officers in our area. Uh, last, the, the last uh, meeting, I announced that we had hired a, a new deputy here uh, who's a resident. She uh, gave her two weeks notice last week. She's going to Larchburg City Police. Uh, these are some pretty tough times for law enforcement around here. Uh, our uh, our uh, newer officers are coming in as, and they're being snapped up uh, pretty much as soon as we train them. So uh, these two I'm looking at as a, as a long-term situation eventually. Uh, they, uh, the plan is to get them on board as deputies, but that is a process that takes a little bit of time. So, uh, and, and they're both uh, police academy graduates uh, who have a lot of law enforcement experience. Hey Dave, is there any retention um, options to keep? This is it, Grant. There you are. Yeah. I was looking for, for who was talking about 19, uh, So 1977, 78, five. Um, do we have retention? Because I read about that and I was concerned that if maybe we're not, I, mean, I know we have a budget mm -hmm. and they could probably do better with that and what have you. But what are, what are we looking at? I mean, we're, if we're training them as a, as a pipeline into the, the rest of the cities, uh, the, pipeline, the pipeline has extended significantly. Uh, we've, I, I would say that over, the 26 year period that we've uh, we've been involved uh, with the sheriff's department with this arrangement, we have uh, a high number of police officers in general throughout several counties, the state police, 
uh, came through this pipeline, if you will. Uh, for much of that time, we would keep deputies two, three, four, some, some for six, seven years before they would move on. Uh, but recently, with the shortage overall in law enforcement, this has become the place to draw from. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, our, our latest uh, deputy came uh, or went to, uh, to Lawrenceburg City, which uh, in <clears throat> local law enforcement, that's one of the premier jobs. It's a very high paying, a lot of, uh, a lot of budget to work with, things like that. So uh, uh, these are some adjustments that I'm trying to make to at least protect ourselves from these, uh, this, during this process. And there has to be a process with the sheriff's department, their interviews or testing, all those kinds of things that have to be done uh, before they will accept them as, as deputies, even with prior experience. So what, uh, what I'm doing here is at least taking care of the security aspect. And the security aspect for us is the high amount of work that they do. Uh, most of what our deputies do is security work. It's a benefit to have them as police officers as well, but a lot of what they do is security type work. Right, but with a, with a community of 6,000 and or plus or minus, it, it, it's the same size as Lawrenceburg or others. Mm -hmm. I mean, we... Well, the issue is, is we don't have industry and they benefit from industry. And uh, I mean, without getting too, too into it, uh, that's, that's where, you know, Lawrenceburg has a riverboat money to... There's, there's no competing with that. So there's the industry of, you know, uh, the old I&M built uh, types of uh, uh, systems, the uh, corporations such as uh, MGP, the old Seagrams, things like that. Uh, and each of these cities has some kind of an industry within them that helps to pay for it. We are strictly a residential community we don't have a tax base that comes to right, us. Or Miller, right? We have to pay for, but well, we don't get that tax money from Miller Township. We don't get money to pay for our roads. Our, our, we pay for our own roads here. These are all private roads. Uh, so all those kind of things kind of combine to create, you know, this, this budget that we have. Um, so what, was there another part to your question or did no, I answer no, that? Or? I just want to know if there's a way to keep retaining officers within Hidden Valley or are we just going to just, are we part of the pipeline? Yeah, I, I, I still understand what the, are we part of the pipeline and that's it? Well, that's another issue. And that's, that's one reason that this security thing can help us out is uh, there are some, even former police officers or, or uh, let's say, retired police officers who don't have an interest in doing full police work. They don't have an interest in doing all the physical parts of it, as far as uh, the training that's involved that the sheriff's department requires, things like that. They don't have uh, an interest in, in even going through the, uh, the testing processes and all that that the sheriff's department requires. Or department requires. So there's another option of having a, a hybrid type of a department that has the security aspects are taken care of by possibly more senior former police officers or former security officers who can take care of the security work and have possibly uh, you know, less deputies instead of having full crew of deputies. Some would be security, some would be this. We won't know. You know, the, to me, the preferred thing would be to have deputies and to have deputies who stay here at least a few years. Uh, but we won't know until things settle down. Right now, we're in, you know, just flying by the seat of our pants, just getting things covered. So that's what I wanted to report to everyone here uh, regarding the security. Yeah, Dave, Ken Horn. Ken Horn, 2790. Have we lost all of our deputies? Is this why we got the two new security? We're guys? down to two deputies right now. One is in training until the end of March. Do we still have Zach Compton? Yeah, he's in. He's the one that's in the police academy right now. All right, thank you. Yes. Yeah. 
Don Norris, 1379 and 80. Um, my son-in-law is a lieutenant with one of the smaller police departments in <clears throat> Hamilton County. His department is L, and he also lives in, my son-in-law lives here in, in Hidden Valley. What we are going through is like every small department in Hamilton County is going through exactly the same thing. They are a pipeline to the larger police departments. It's just the way it works. Okay, any other questions? I mainly just wanted to let you know, we're working on it. We see the, the issue and it, it came up pretty sudden. Uh, we lost, uh, we lost our most, our second most senior deputy, which is three years, uh, just recently to the county within the last few weeks. So uh, that, and it's, it's a pretty tight uh, situation that we're running into. Um, I don't, I don't think I got into, we, uh, we are, re I did talk about retrofitting the security car. Uh, we have also purchased a 2017 Ford Explorer as a replacement for that vehicle that was taken out of service. And that was thanks to the kind folks at Amberley Village who gave us a really good deal on this, on this vehicle, very well maintained. Uh, that kind of thing. I want to report to you that uh, our Lake Patrol, I have one of these security team members, Adam uh, Boskin, will be uh, replacing uh, Paul Ross as the uh, leader of our Lake Patrol. He'll be managing the duties uh, of, uh, of enforcement on the lake. I've also hired a former Hidden Valley Deputy Josh Goodall, who left, left us to become a teacher to assist our current team of Will, Wayne, and Angel. Uh, under infrastructure management, our maintenance team was challenged with a snow event in early February. Uh, our uh, team leader, Jason, did a nice job preparing for this event. And I don't know if you followed the weather on this. It was a, it we were in the middle. We could have gotten a lot of snow or we could have gotten a lot of, of ice and we wound up in the middle and we got both and it, it changed by the hours. That It was like a stream that went through and it just kept uh, you know, shifting back and forth. So he did a nice job preparing for it. Uh, could have gone several different ways. And the timing of our salt distribution was important because it started with rain. Uh, you're wasting salt if you put it down in the rain and then you had that immediately immediate freezing rain. So our timing was pretty good. Uh, it was a challenging snow event. Uh, and I think they did a pretty good job overall. Uh, yes, they did. Thank you. Very much. We, uh, we're in the final stages of preparing for our roads plan for 2022, working with the roads task force and our consultant. I hope to present this plan to the board for their approval by our next board meeting. Uh, under erosion control, our roads task force is asking for volunteers who would be willing to train to be spotters for ditching efforts. Uh, these volunteers will be given a short training session and a specific area to observe uh, for standing water and other ditching problems. And we're trying to compile a report that we can use to create a plan to make necessary repairs and replacements to various culverts and ditches. Please email me if you have an interest in helping with this. This isn't something where you're gonna be expected to attend a lot of meetings, things like this. It'd be kind of a, a one-time shot, maybe every year or so that, that we would be asking you to do this. Uh, golf course, we, uh, we're doing some repairs to the south wall of the clubhouse and scheduled for the week of March 14th. It's been contracted since last year. Another problem that we've had is uh, getting contractors to, uh, to do work. It's uh, busy for them, low uh, number of employees out there working. So uh, uh, we're, we're glad to see that that's uh, finally gonna be taken care of. Um, we have sent out an RFQ for paving the golf course cart pass using funds that were generated by the golf course. Uh, we hope to have this work done sometime this year and Dave uh, Hafner will uh, elaborate somewhat. 
if you have questions. Uh, while the golf course has endured a rough season so far for winter, uh, they were still able to get in a few rounds between the heavy rain and ice and snow. Yeah, believe it or not, we had some golfers out there. I think I see one over, <laughs> over there. I don't know how you golf in a parka and all gloves and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> don't discourage him. <laughs> Also wanted to, we'll, we will be giving you updates on fiber optics. Um, we finally, uh, we, we had a, a group that came in kind of early and uh, got some work done over Matterhorn, Mirchin Way in that area. Uh, pretty much they, they were able to get to the work quickly and they took advantage of that. Uh, we're finally on a schedule where they're telling us a little bit more in advance. And this is this, this is posted in Echoes this month, right? So we'll try to get you this in advance a little bit earlier to generally tell you where they're going to be doing work. We uh it's on the back side of the calendar. Back side of the calendar in your echoes. Something to look forward to, right? Um so I just wanted to pass that on to you and uh we're happy to see that this project is uh is in motion. Yeah. Uh, Tom Cross, uh, 1573, 1574. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, once they finish with uh, a particular street, uh, will that uh, service be available? This or... has to do with when it comes into the valley. I see. Uh, like the area around Matterhorn, that is going to be drawn off of that, that area by that substation that's over by Matterhorn and Tuppence. Uh, that's where the line will come in. The the uh, the uh, digging and things that they did at this time uh, has not been completed yet until it's connected to that, and that line hasn't come to the substation area. There's another one that will be coming off of uh, Fairway by that substation. Remember, this all has to do with REMC, so we're they're using their right of ways. So. Uh, and and that's I, I believe that's probably closer. I don't have exact timing on all this. What we're told is that as these as these areas there they'll be in pockets, and as those areas uh, can be completed, that area will uh, they they will canvas that area and let them know that it'll be coming up soon, and you'll be given an opportunity to join on. It Thank is. you. Yeah, if I can jump, if I can jump in real quick yeah. from what they're telling us, nothing. The first house probably won't be lit up until probably end of August into September. So we're looking at least six months. Overall, it's probably a two-year process before they get through the whole valley. So exactly what's going to be hooked up first, we don't know. But the last meeting we had, they pretty much guesstimated nothing before the end of August would be turned on. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. No, no, no. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I don't have anything else. If you have any questions, thank you. Dave, it's all yours. I've got a short update uh, for the North Thanks, Rich. So, this first slide talks about our cast position at the end of 2019, 20, and 21. And you can see we had a cast position of $14,000 at the end of 19. Uh, we grew that to 164,000 at the end of the last uh, 20, and at the end of 21, we were at 305,000 dollars in uh, cash balance. Uh, this is our this slide shows our membership update. I, I showed this slide in December. This hasn't changed a whole lot. Uh, you can see how our membership has grown uh, along with our our income. Uh, currently, the staff is working on memberships. We're working on. Resigning existing members, uh, signing new members. Uh, I think they signed a single membership, three families and one young professional uh, this month. So that's nice. Uh, we're also working on golf outings and leagues. These have both been really good uh, revenue generators for the golf course. Uh, golf outings have been really popular at Hidden Valley for years. Um, I feel like we got away from that. The last few years, we've, we've grown that back to about 14 outings. So we're looking to continue that. As well as leagues, we have a Monday night league for the men. We also added a women's league on Monday night, and then we added a Thursday night league uh, group from Dearborn County Country Club. So that's been good revenue for us. Um, 
I just want to mention one thing about the cart pass. They're they're in really bad shape. It's it's one of the first things any participant sees, whether you're a guest, a member, a POA member, you know, somebody planning an outing. It, it's the first thing you kind of experience. Uh, it certainly makes it harder to sell the golf course. Uh, we feel like we can do this in house, out of pocket. But really, a, a bigger issue that people may not realize is one of the biggest advantages of having an asphalt is the ability to do an overlay. And what that means is no different than our roads. We come in and put a two or three inch coating down. That parking lot, you see it on our roads, you see it on the county roads. We have the same situation here in our car pass, but if we let them deteriorate to a point where we cannot do that overlay, the cost is going to get exponentially more. So there's another part of the process is, is, is being able to do that you know, sooner than later. So I think it's important to get this done sooner than later um, so we don't end up with a bigger problem. Just a quick question on that. The call, uh, the current call number, number, please. Ed Graham, 1977, 1978. Um, just a quick question. When I saw the RFQ, it was for six foot wide when the current ones are not? Yeah, the current ones are about five. And what do they do with the, because the, the bid, I mean, because I, I have a colleague that I recommended they come bid on it. Great. So it was, what are we, what are they going to do? Because the two inch or the six inch on each side, it, it, if there's nothing existing, are they going to have to pour the additional more than just the two inches to compensate for the six foot? Yes. You'll have to excavate in a lot of areas and add base. And that's part of the bid. Okay. And we've asked them to bid that separately. And, and a big part of that is, is Jason Gadd, our superintendent, his equipment's so wide, he rides, no matter what happens, he rides down on the edges. And it, you know, obviously we don't want to ride along the Right, no, I understand why a six so. foot. I just want to make sure I understood the, yeah. so that's the, the part expectation. Of that reasoning. But it's a separate bid? Uh, they're going to quote it square footage and they're also going to break that, break that out separately. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> And that's all I have. All right, I'm going to move to the committee to club reports. Mr. Cross, you're first up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we sure will. I got old eyes. <laughs> Sorry, for those of you I've not met, uh, my name is Tom Cross, uh, lot 1573 1574. Architecture Committee. Uh, the board this evening, we have uh, three items. First, we have a uh, request for property bond return. Uh, that is lot 1088, located at uh, 20252 uh, Matterhorn. Uh, the bond is in the amount of $500. Uh, there are no dues and no outstanding fines or fees. That property is owned by Cindy and Chuck Morgan. The only one we have this evening. You want to vote on that or you want to do that? Again? That's, that's the only one. Yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah. 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 Can, can I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Awesome. Second, Steve. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's four. All right. Next, we have a request for uh, the approval of an eight foot variance on a rear setback uh, to place a shed on the property of Mike and Donna Kinnett. Uh, that's lot number 3292. And they're located at uh, 19174 Hampton Drive. Okay, so we've been to the property. We have uh, a number of the committee members have been out. Okay. I've been out there personally. Great. They're on a very challenging lot. To, yeah. uh, their house is laid diagonally or set up, built diagonally on the lot. Uh, it goes back to a point. Um, they'd like to place a shed there for extra storage as we all need. Uh, letters were sent. Uh, the old variance good. process good. Was, uh, was completed. Okay. Uh, we had no, uh, no opposition. No okay. okay. All right. All right. We'll go ahead and take the vote. If I could have a motion on that. Motion. I'll second. Second. Dave. And all in favor? Aye. 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 That's four. Uh, the last item we have is a request for a lot split. Uh, that's owned by Linda and Mike Cheney, lot number 396, located at 20287 uh, Lakeview Drive. Um, regretfully, and this doesn't come up very much. Uh, due to a, uh, a non-compliance with the way the current board 
uh, or, or the current uh, bylaws are written, uh, the board is unable to make a recommendation for that uh, split decision. You don't mean the board. You I mean, mean the committee. I'm sorry. Yes. Excuse me. Right. So you guys at this point the have rejected it. Was unable to okay. Yeah, favorably. All right. I'm going to this. Yeah. I'm going to have Dave talk through this and I want to make sure everybody's clear because our intent here is to do what's right. And we're in the gray zone of reviewing the way we handle these. And there's some definite changes that need to take place. I think, Tom, you're. You're, yes, you're, you're in the loop on that. So we're going to get into looking at that. Yeah. So I want Dave to explain what we're dealing with, what the proposed changes look like and why, because we want to do the right thing by the residents, not to slow them down. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Scott. So Thanks, Dave. many of you might know, I, I sat on architecture, I chaired it, and now I work with these guys as the liaison. The situation we have is what, what the POA is asking for and what, how the bylaw is written is we're, we're asking for a, and Tom, I'm going to ask you for some help on this. We're asking for a, a survey to show a revised plot plan, and that technically can't be done until this split goes through the county and is recorded. And that's kind of where we are. So what we're asking for um, really needs to happen after the county has recorded this. Oh, hold on one second, please. Tom, can you? Yeah, is that? Well, I'll come back to you. Okay, is that how you see uh, it? I think that that's uh, accurate. Yes, uh, Mr. Hager. Uh, I'll explain it also in case that you didn't understand that. Uh, we have a, a set of bylaws here, uh, as you're aware of. Uh, and as committee members, uh, when our architecture committee members, when project requests come in front of us, we have to look at those requests and apply the bylaws to them. Uh, are the setbacks correct? Uh, is this allowed to be per, uh, built here? Our bylaws right now are asking for a specific set of drawings be presented along with that request for the lot split. Um, we are being told uh, that what the bylaws are asking for cannot be given to us the way it's currently written. So we're going to have to go back. We've been in touch with the county uh, uh, reporter's office. Uh, we we think we understand how we need to move forward to change those bylaws uh, so that uh, we can uh, accept these drawings the way they're being presented to us. And uh, so now, what is the compliance situation? Oh, okay, sir. Uh, right now, uh, the bylaws ask that when a lot is being split that the new plot plan be presented to uh, the uh, architecture committee with the existing structures drawn on that plan. And we're being told that the existing structures cannot be drawn on that plan until it's reported. There are no existing structures. Yeah, the, the houses, no. if, we have, if we have homeowner A, homeowner B, and they're gonna divide a lot between them. You have a home on A and a home on B. Our bylaws currently ask that those homes be shown on that new plot plan. They are shown. Uh, that's on the north side, on the south side. So it was split some time ago. No was required. Okay, can, I can't can, can, can we that. do this? I think it'd be really helpful because I think this has a good ending. If we can finish the conversation of what the gray zone looks like and what we're trying to do. And then if you still have questions after that, we're happy to answer them. I don't, I don't think we're. Are you Mr. Cheney, by the way, sir? Are you Mr. Cheney? Yes, I am. Okay. okay. I just wanted to know. Sir. I think if, if you'll hang on and let me yeah, get yeah, uh, yeah, Mr. Cheney, saying, like, I think we'll resolve yeah, any questions. I think you're going you to, I think you're going to be happy when you leave. That doesn't always happen. Yeah. But if you let us finish. <laughs> You got to yeah, yeah. yeah. laugh every time. I, I think you're going to be happy at the end. Let us finish the process because if we don't explain this in detail, somebody's going to come back to us and later and say, what are you guys doing? Right. So we're in so, the middle of looking at changing the bylaws to make this easier, to do it the right way, and to make your life easier. So hang tight because you may not have a problem at the end of this. Yeah, the if way, you do, then, give then us, Dave buys beers. Yeah, the way, <laughs> the way the rule is written, spend architect, a lot of time on this. architecture is following our bylaws. Yes, that's that's the bottom line. The way it is written right now, so bylaw specifically. Okay, this can I just let me finish. All right, so 
I, I believe with the, with the way the rule should be written and what the county's telling us and what we're getting recommendations from our lawyer, what you guys are looking to do will align with the new rule. So we have to either table this for several months until we write the rule and have two readings, or we allow this to go through tonight. And my recommendation is that we, we, we pass this. That's my recommendation to the board based on the fact that this is how we're gonna set this rule up. This is how it probably should be done. So our rule needs to change. The bylaw needs to change how we've had it for, I don't know, 10 or 20 years. So that's, that's kind of where we are. It's either that or we have to table this and rewrite the rule, which we will do, but that takes two or three months because we have to rewrite the rule and technically we have to have two readings at open meetings. I've been in real estate for quite some time. I'm a broker. I have never seen this before. I have never seen okay, the situation. That's we understand that. Yeah. What, that, that's why the work that's been done with Dave and surveyors that represent the community and Mr. Cross and a bunch of other folks, we're trying to get this corrected so you don't see it again. What I want to bear with me, please. What I want to make sure is since particularly since we have a big crowd. Is there any opposition, any concern from the crowd that we know we need to make a change? It's the right thing to do. It aligns with the way the county set up, the way we should have been doing it. Is there any opposition at all that we approve this as a board and then we go through our two month process of revising the rule and voting on it? Any concerns on that? Julie Mason, lot 2224. Um, it sounds like this is the right thing to do. My only question would be, what was the reason it was set up the way we had it set up in our bylaws? Was it just a like misstep that we didn't no, I, realize we didn't have those? Or was there a reason it was in place that way that we're, we're going to start kind of, we're like over yeah, something we, that was in place? We try to keep really good records on plot plans for setbacks and all those things. And what we're, what we're asking for needs to be done after it's recorded. So that that's kind of where where we are with it. So what you're saying is we go ahead exactly. with the, with the split. Exactly. So the rule, sale. the rule, our rule is not written correctly. Our by rule, our our current by rule, bylaw, excuse me, is not written correctly. Are you saying? Okay, okay. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I hate to do this. This isn't the fun part of this. Um, you've spoken. Okay. You, there's other questions I want to hear from the rest of the audience because we're going to come back and try to support you. I'm not sure if I'm making that clear. Okay. I would take any help I could get, but we're trying to support you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Ken, yes. thank you. Thank you. Ken, grab the mic, please, because otherwise we can't pick it up on the recording. Thanks, Ken. Quick question. Ken Horn 27. Yeah. Thanks, Ken. So are all past lot splits invalid? Good question. No. So good question. So here, here's here's the caveat. Sir, yes. if you if you guys are going to spl split this lot. If you have any new structures or any kind of projects that you want to do, you will have to have a revised plot plan brought to architecture. That's okay. I just want to make you aware. Just want to make you aware that will be in the new rule because what I don't want to have a situation if somebody does a lot split, spends the money with the surveyor, goes through the whole process comes back to architecture two years later and wants to put a shed or a swimming pool or an outbuilding and we say well now you need a revised plot plan you will need that before you can do any new projects and that will be in the new role can i try I, hold it, hold it. Right, right now our bylaws are asking that all the buildings on both of the lots and the lot that's being split be on the new drawing when it's presented to us for that split. The survey is saying the drawings on the existing properties, not the lot being split, the existing properties that are splitting the lot cannot be drawn until that's recorded. Any, any building or something that might be on the lot that's being sold, that would have to be on that Correct. survey when it was presented to us. Right. So what we're saying is perhaps we had the cart before the horse. We're going to we're going to split the lots. We will split the lots as uh, the surveyor has intended us to do with these drawings without these other buildings. 
But again, as Mr. Hafner has indicated, a year from now, let's say you wanted to put a deck or you want to put a shed up or addition to the back of your garage, you will need at that time to get an Indiana certified surveyor to draw up a new plot plan and it will have to show all of the structures. Correct. We can't get to that time until we split. That's correct. Correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Exactly. It's a catch exactly. 22. Yep. Why are you delaying splitting the lot? I'm sorry, what's the question, sir? Why are you delaying allowing that lot to be split? When you're looking ahead three or four years later, something that may not happen. Um, right. So I still did. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mr. Cheney, I promised myself I'd never use this. I hate this. Thing. <laughs> so don't make don't make somebody else that wants to use it come up here. I want to make sure we've got the questions answered. We're going to move to a vote. I think this is the right thing to do for Cheney's. Anybody else will clean up the bylaws. It'll align where it needs to align, and we'll move forward. Anybody else? Bill, I, no, you're good. Anybody else? And I, I don't want to see the residents okay. spend three months waiting on this. One, one, two, and then we're done, okay? Otherwise, we're going to be here till breakfast and nobody brought anything. Hi, I'm Frank Jerry Goodrich. I'm also an architectural. Okay. Uh, I took a half day off of work yesterday to go down the county and talk to them and also do some research. I have not had time to get together with Tom so we can discuss it. We will at our next meeting. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Gary. Which is next week, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. One more in the back, I thought. Yes. Thank you. Can you can you introduce yourself the lot? Robert Price, uh, 396. Thank 395, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, uh, uh, to get a new or revised plot plan, then that would require to have a new survey done. And then the surveyor, or the, it would have to then show all the structures that are on there, which would be what the, the county would have already, right? Well, it's for the POA records. Right, all right. So, so if you want to do any new project, we know what the setbacks are. So we, we won't have that setback. We won't have that new property line. So if you were looking to do a new project, we would require you to have a new survey done. Right. Okay, we're going to make a kind of a motion to motion. Oh, you lied to me. You said you were <laughs> you lied. We're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, the county will require that. So, Bill, in all future meetings, John Dutton's going to sit next to you and he's going to hold you to two questions for the night. So, make sure they're good ones. <laughs> you want to make a motion? <laughs> All right. Motion. Motion. Yes. Yes. Second. I'll make Second. that. Okay. okay. We'll let we'll let Dave do it. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 You happy ending. Here. You have your lot split. <laughs> no more lot splits for anybody for 12 months, no matter what. <laughs> we'll be, Any no, other just, questions just for the architecture committee yeah. before Thanks. I Thanks, Tom. myself? <laughs> 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 Okay. okay. <laughs> George, you're patiently waiting. It's all yours, sir. George, you have slides to go with your talk. Uh, all right, I'll get out of the way. Lights. I'll get out of the way. You want yours first? Hold on. No. Again, this is George. Future planning. I think he's saying this. He's got the slides for late. Okay. Well, I have. I have future planning next. If you guys want to switch them, switch them. We struggle with agendas. That's amazing. Okay, we're good. Eric, you want to go? You want to jump in, Eric? Go ahead. You guys flip. All right. Let the record show that. the record show that I'm going first. I will, I'll make sure you're in there. Okay, I'm George Lawrence. I'm a chair of the future planning committee. Um, we have been involved in so many things over the last uh, 12 months that. There's no way I'm going to stand up here and tell you about all of them. So uh, what we're going to do tonight is uh, to uh, report on the, the big uh, project we have going on right now, because some of you may have already seen some of the results of this project. 
and that is the celebration of the 50th anniversary of Hidden Valley. Uh, we have a committee of about 12, 15 people working on this. A number of them are here in the room tonight, and uh, we've had a great time <coughs> doing it. Uh, so far, we've had two events. One of them was mentioned already, and that was the Pioneer uh, Gathering, uh, which uh, happened in December. We had about 100 people or so show up at the golf club and had a great time. These are all folks that were 30-year residents or longer, and it was quite a reunion for everybody. Uh, the second uh, um, event we have already had, uh, thanks to Steve and the Civic Club, uh, we, we uh, joined with them on the polar bear dip, and we uh, dedicated um, a banner at that time. Yeah and uh, generally got in their way. Or none of us took the dip, however. Uh, and uh, we also have done other things that aren't evidence yet. Well, one of them is, in fact, you've seen the 50th anniversary banner at the front entrance. That will stay up all year long, we hope, the weather permitting. Uh, we have also ordered five uh, uh, flags we have five locations here in Hidden Valley with flagpoles, and they're going to have 50th anniversary flags on them eventually. We have ordered the first batch of commemor commemorative t-shirts, and those will be available for sale starting uh, next year. Rick's got one. <laughs> we, uh, we have several. Oh. That's it, right? It's a camera. It's a camera. Keep turning. All right. Thank you, Rick. So uh, we we are going to be ordering these in batches uh, during the year because we think they're going to sell pretty well. And also, we're later on during the year we're going to have the ability to order uh, one-off type uh, products. Sweatshirts, t-shirts, uh, uh, water bottles, we're going to have all that stuff. So a lot will be announced during the, during the year. Uh, the other thing we have done is uh, we've had articles published in the journal already, in the Echoes already. I believe that Neighbors Magazine will have an article also covering the, uh, the uh, little bit of the history of Hidden Valley. So there's also a bunch of work in process. We have a major event also scheduled uh, with in conjunction with the Civic uh, Club, and that'll be uh, an expanded Fourth of July uh, weekend. Uh, we'll be doing the regular stuff on Fourth of July, but we're also going to be adding a component of celebration for the 50th. Then Labor Day. We're also going to do the same thing. Labor Day is going to be a, a full weekend, maybe four, maybe three days yep. uh, of, of events. Uh, not only the, the again the typical Labor Day uh, events, but also a whole bunch of additional 50th anniversary event. One of which is to bury a time capsule, and we're going to uh, bury it. We think somewhere in the 77 acres. Uh, property, put some benches and landscaping around it. So we that is still work in process, but uh, we will be doing a um, a um, time capsule, and we'll be asking you what should go in the time capsule. So uh, watch watch this space in the echoes and that stuff. So that's uh, basically what we are doing this year. There will be other smaller events planned, kind of on an ad hoc basis. There are other clubs that, uh, for example, the uh, the youth uh, the youth club Children's wants activities. to get together with mm -hmm. us and do something involving the youth. We'll probably have that scheduled later on during the year. Anyway, it's going to be a big year, and uh, we hope you all enjoy it. And uh, we have a lot of stuff to be announced. So watch the echoes, watch uh, Facebook, watch email. All that stuff will be be coming out. One more thing I want to mention, and that is the next event, which is uh, a week from Saturday. And that is, uh, we have, uh, again, it's an event that we had last year, the Civic Club had it last year. It's called a pub crawl. Uh, this is an adult-only event. Now. Yeah. I 
make sure you're aware of that. <laughs> there are going to be five locations right around the Hidden Valley area here. Uh, each of them will be serving your, your favorite beverage. We'll be serving a specialty uh, a food item for that night. We'll probably have a specialty drink. We're talking they might. about having a specialty drink. There'll be five venues. You'll come to one venue and, and uh, register. We're going to have a shuttle bus to take you around to these to these uh, um, locations. George, George, just a second. Can, but can I jump in on this yeah. one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's there's been a lot of changes. Okay, <laughs> I thought we set that out today. I'll give you real quick. March fifth, um, Saturday, six to eleven plus is the pub crawl. We've done a lot of changes, kind of revamping things in the past couple of days. So we're at the golf course. We have a DJ down there doing disco music and seventies dance, seven to eleven. Willie's upstairs. We have acoustic um, doing six to eleven, doing seventies music downstairs. We have the Eden Band. They are playing from 7 to 11. They're uh, an eight-piece band. They do Motown, stuff like that, and dance stuff also. They'll be there. Down here in the POA from 6 to 8, we will have a history presentation, slideshow, a bunch of history about the valley going on down here. We'll also have T-shirt sales down here. And towards the end of the night, at 10 o'clock, uh, Barrelheads is going to kick in. We have a DJ down Barrelheads. They're going to kind of clear the tables, turn it into a dance area. So if 70s music down Barrelheads is kind of an after party till whenever. Uh, there is no longer a shuttle since everything is just back and forth between the two locations. We're asking you to, you know, get a ride up, have somebody drop you off, drive safely, come to the locations, have some fun, and then enjoy yourself. Um, Willie's will also be open until midnight that night. So it's just a great celebration for the community. We're asking you, you don't have to, dress 70s. Throw on your hippie stuff, your tie dye, your your disco gear, your rock and roll T-shirts, whatever you wore back in the seventies, and come on out and have some fun. Yeah, Tom. Uh, Tom Cross, fifteen seventy three and four. Just a quick question: Would be uh, uh, for the entire uh, time frame at both locations? At every location. So, well, golf course is six to eleven. Top of Willie's is six to eleven. Downstairs at Willie's is 7 to 11, but we'll have music on in the first hour. And here is 6 to 8. Our, our thought is the later it gets, the younger drinking crowd will be out. They're probably not going to come down for the history piece. Then the Barrowhead starts in at 10 o'clock. We, we were trying to do something earlier at Barrowheads, but with their dinner service and everything, and with Indiana laws, you can't move around a restaurant with kids there with a drink. So we, we came to a compromise at 10 o'clock. They're going to shift their business over and it'll become more like a like a dance hall, a club yeah. so it should be a great night there's something for everybody over 18 over yeah. 21 over 21 uh, yes 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 over 21 yeah well, now you can still go to barrelheads and eat during the day or during the evening and into willie's restaurant and eat if your kids are with you we're not shutting down the restaurants so willie's upstairs will be in the bar area thank yeah. you my children are not with Yes, <laughs> Tom. We'll, we'll get something out that puts on yeah. one page what the hours at each yeah. location. I, I have a few flyers with me if you want some. We just, believe me, I was just revamping the schedule last night after last minute changes. We started hanging some. We're going to be blasting it out on uh, Facebook and stuff, getting the schedule out there. I'll have Rich email it out and blast it out. Um, literally, this I just finalized the schedule last night after tweaking things around, and there was a whole lot of changes to this one. So that's where we're at. Thank you for the update. Yeah, thanks, George. Okay, so that's all I'm going to report on. That was a lot more than I thought of. <laughs> uh, we got six or eight other things, and we're going to hold off until the annual meeting to talk about all the other stuff. But I uh, hope you enjoy the mud crawl and watch for flags and banners and t shirts and all that stuff. <coughs> okay, Eric. We're just going to go in succession for time. Eric, then Amy, and then Don, and then Rick. And I'll ask you guys, don't rush, but be quick. Okay? Yeah. All the important stuff, but we got to hurry up the pace. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, wrong night to pick up the pace. I always think I've got very little things, and I do have more than I expect. Um, first of all, I would like to announce uh, to the board that uh, a long-term member of our committee, Jerry Young, uh, has asked to retire, came to a, a decision after many, many years and, and some other extenuating circumstances that he would you know, prefer to kind of retire from the committee. So um, 
I mean, I don't know that the board needs to do anything other than maybe acknowledge that. Uh, I will say this, Jerry will be missed. He has orchestrated our uh, lake uh, statistics reports. He, you know, he's looking at thermoclines and you know, turbidity in the lake and, and kind of the measures that we look at as to whether or not we've got a healthy environment to be swimming in and also um, to fish in and for fish. Uh, we're looking to transition that that part of his role to our environmental group that is employed through the, the POA. Uh, Linda Hartman's been working with me on that. We'll transition that as soon as we can name an individual to take that take up that mantle for us. But uh, again, I want to extend our heartfelt thanks to Jerry. He's, it's many many years, and I think it was a very hard decision for him. Uh, let's see. Important dates, uh, lake treatments. I know we talked about this in the last meeting. Uh, well, we didn't have a board meeting, but uh, so the lake treatment dates are set now. Uh, May the 9th, June the 13th, and August the 15th are our tentative date. Well, not tentative, those are the dates. Uh, what we'll have is, you know, you have rain dates in case we have inclement weather. So keep in mind, those are the dates. And this is kind of falls in line with what we do every year in terms of scheduling those a couple of weeks before uh, the major summer holidays. Um, again, no watering and, and the likes. There'll be signage around for that. Uh, the other thing I want to uh, point out as far as dates is uh, your boat registrations and the boat tests that come out will be coming out. Uh, you should see those in the mail. I think they're getting mailed uh, March the 3rd, as I understand. Uh, so, you know, of course, Doc Reynolds and the likes will also be going so please make sure you get those back to us as soon as possible so that we can take care of making sure anybody who would like a doc has a doc of that. Uh, sorry, I don't know my list here. Um, the Lakes Committee has, uh, I mentioned this at, uh, at the last meeting that we were at, uh, one of the services that we wanted to kind of offer to our uh, community this year, uh, we're actually going to plow forward with, and that is kind of a, a lake cleanup. Uh, if you've lived here and you've been on the lake for any amount of time, you know that in the springtime there's an awful lot of debris that floods into the lake, uh, you know, particular days like this where it rains like the Jesus. Um, so we've had some complaints about people having debris around their docks. Uh, what we're going to offer is on uh, May the 15th, we're going to use our work barge here uh, and we're going to have some volunteers and we'll probably be requesting more volunteers. Uh, to help us out with that, we're going to come to those docks with a work barge, and our request would be that the property owners, you know, put those items on their dock, you know, kind of organize them on the dock. We're not going to fish them out of the lake for you, uh, but we will haul them off, and, and we hope that that's a good service uh, to the lake community. Uh, again, getting rid of that stuff may mean that you have to haul it up a significant hill, uh, may cause some issues. Some of our older community maybe has difficulty with that. You know, we want to try and help you out with that, and what we'll do is we'll bring that back to the uh, the main uh, marina and we'll dispose of it uh, appropriately there. So May the 15th, more information will be coming out about that. Uh, fixed docks at Willie's are under construction. Uh, <clears throat> we, we've talked about those a little bit. Uh, you know, we do have a bid out still for uh, the floating portion of those docks uh, to see where we came in on those things. They were really, really bad disrepair. So that's a, a nice, uh, you know, it'll be a nice thing for us this spring, you know, kind of take care of some of those. They, they do get beat up a little bit. Uh, fish study. Uh, we tried to do, or we tried to get our contractor to do a fish study on the small lakes for us. Um, it came in a lot more expensive than we expected, and we wanted to do one lake, and it was way more expensive to do one than, than six. Uh, so what we decided to do in our last committee meeting was to push off the small lakes fish studies until next year. Uh, we want to be able to get that into the budget and budget appropriately for those things uh, so that we can take care of that. The goal there is to know what's in those small lakes. Uh, it's long time, you know, been kind of a, an issue for us. Uh, what's in those lakes, what fish exist, what is the culture like in those lakes? Uh, and so we want to make sure that we do that uh, quickly. Uh, we also will have our main lake fish study this year. Again, that's a once every three years happens in the evening uh, and our usual contractor ATAC is going to be back for doing that and that was budgeted for this year so the monies are already there. Uh, one other thing that uh, I wanted to cover or two more things sorry this would be the second to last. So in that meeting uh, what we talked about in the committee is uh, a desire to place slot bass into Lake Melody which is the lake at the front of the community. 
Uh, we have traditionally not done that. And in fact, there's a rule uh, in the bylaws, 639, uh, which currently reads, new and additional fish may not be placed in POA lakes without permission of the POA board of directors. So our motion was uh, to allow the fishing game club after tournaments to take the slot bass and put them into Lake Melody. Uh, the motion was passed unanimously within our committee. Uh, I'll give you the thoughts on that. The thoughts behind that were that lake gets fished a lot, lots of fishing pressure. So we don't think that adding slot bass into that lake is going to do any kind of harm to the environment in that lake. Uh, we also think that those fish will probably get fished out pretty quickly. It is common with that lake. Um, so I don't know that what we're looking at is a rule change necessarily, uh, because it does say in the existing rule that uh, with the permission of the POA board. So I, I, I don't know what the most appropriate way to handle that is. Um, I don't know that we want to make that a bylaw change. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I hope not. Or if we're just asking you for permission for the fishing game club only to place I would pass. I think I would go for permission one time and then because if it's a bylaw, it's going to take it three months. Well, and, and so, honestly, the next step for us is after the fish study happens on the small lakes and we see that there is maybe a need to put some of these fish in those places, we may want to extend that once we kind of see what those yeah, fish are doing. Ed Graham, 1977. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just say in your request that you will, that gets proven to fish study is not, and then that way it's done. Well, uh, in the lakes committee, we have a specific verbiage that we passed as a committee, so I don't really want to adjust that here uh, in this room uh, without the committee having approved that. I don't think that's a suggestion. Um, Eric, we, we tend to not put that much specificity mm -hmm. because it can change over time right. with conditions in the lake. So I think something just as simple as a board member makes a motion and mm -hmm. to allow you to do that, and we just vote on it, and that's it. Okay. Dave in the back. Yeah, and I'll make that motion, but I just want to mention this. Probably the spirit of that rule is we don't want anybody putting in different types of fish in these right. lakes, you know, for invasive fish or things like that. So that's the premise, I'm sure, of that rule. So if we're taking if we're taking specific largemouth bass out of the main lake and putting them into a, a lake, we're, we're, we're not getting involved in that situation. That, that's my understanding as well. I mean, we're not dropping, you know, something from a different body of water that they bring a disease or anything right. here. It's coming specifically out of our lake into our lakes. So Eric, let's let's do this before we go to a board vote. Let's see if there's any questions or concern yeah. from the audience, and then we'll, we'll yeah, just vote good. after listening. Just just a comment, Tedrick Park 1303. I assume the request to the board will be for a specific per period of time, 2022. And if you want to do it again next year, you ask it. I'm just asking. Um, it hadn't been written that way, but again, you know, as I read the rule today, again, it just says that we need permission from the POA board. So I guess we could go that direction. Yeah. Again, I'll ask the board for some guidance on that. I mean, if, if that's how you want to do that, I think that's. Yeah. Any, anybody else? Please grab the mic. I hate to be the, the mic cop, but we really do want to be picked up on the recording. I don't see any hands coming up, Scott. Okay. So I think I'll just proceed. Okay. Um, Ford, any other questions? I'm good. Nope. Um, it, it would like to make a motion and a little bit of specificity about how long. I can make a motion to allow a uh, fishing game to put what we call the slotted bass from tournaments. Slot bass only from tournaments. Okay. Yes. To go in the Lake Melody. Mm -hmm. Specifically, Lake Melody. In what period of time? I think we should go at least until our fish study is done next year. Okay, until the fish study is completed. Okay, I'll stick with that. Favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome, pretty straight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> one last thing, and this is, man, I should never leave off with the bad news. Um, so the gate was supposed to close on this loose gate uh, the 5th of March. Uh, we do have to take some delays because we have work going on on the Lily's docks. Uh, we're looking, uh, Dave and I have discussed, we're looking at the 12th as being sort of the drop dead date for that. Uh, I don't anticipate that being extended. Um, 
So hopefully that will work. Uh, again, lots of rain this week, but we haven't closed the gate yet. And then next week, not a lot of rain. So I'm, I'm really optimistic that that's not going to create a problem for boaters. I know we have some fishing tournaments towards the end of the month, the early part of April. Uh, it has not historically been an issue for us filling the lake when we've closed late, and we've done it a few times. I think uh, ice flows and, and some other things have kept us from being able to close the gate on time. Uh, so that's the one bit of bad news I will part with. Sure. So <laughs> thank you guys. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to make this quick, okay? I know I say that a lot. Hey, before I proceed, can I, can people get some of these tonight? Yeah. Like right now? Okay. Um, I'm going to, can we go to, okay, let's just do that to go to the trails. I don't know if there's enough for everybody. This is a new brochure <coughs> for the trails at Lightner Field. Um, there is a correction that needs to be made on, oh, I didn't even say one of myself. So. On the back, on the two point mile trail, on the owl trail, it's just a misspelling. Um, and this is Jeff Dixon did this, right? Or Dickman? Dickman. So, um, which is, these are awesome. I think he did a great job. We also have a bigger map that we plan on maybe displaying it somehow over like maybe by the where the playground is and maybe the sports center can add to it if they have announcements they want to put in there. But we discussed at the meeting, we had some issues, we were missing three people. So some of this is kind of, it still needs to be voted on what they would like and where to put it. But I'm just bringing this out there to you guys so you can see it. Um, we also, uh, Jeff did some signs that we can put for the trails, which they look awesome. Again, uh, they need to be voted on. So we're going to have to wait until our next meeting, which is the third Tuesday, Claudia? Third Tuesday. So anybody's welcome to come, please. Uh, let's see, where else were we at? Oh, we assigned a task force for the pool um, just to help our new manager transition into her position. Um, that'll help out Claudia and Jim Leitner are on this task force. Um, I think they plan on meeting next week. Is that correct, Claudia? Hope to, yeah. Um, also, uh, the Dearborn County Anti Littler Litter Incentive. Um, I volunteered us to help clean up state line bill, which is horrendous. Um, so that will be April 2nd. Um, we're meeting at Sugar Ridge at 8 30. If anybody would like to come and help, we'll supply bring her in gloves, but she will have some of those um, pickers, I guess is what they're called. You can, if that helps anybody want to volunteer. <laughs> and I will bring this up again and remind everybody next month that we're, we're doing this. Are you um, just looking for people to show up? Show up and pick up, literally. I just did that for you wanted people to sign up. Yes, you can sign up. Actually, I have an email um, that is on the Parks and Rec uh, website. You can email me and I'll put your name down. Okay. And we would love to see you. Okay. I'm making my kid do it. <laughs> he wants to. Uh, he likes the pickers. Um, but other than that, really, I need to, uh, we have a lot of stuff to vote on. So it really, I think next month will be, I'll have more information for the board. Awesome. Thank you. Are we good? Yep. Right on. We're out. Gone. I have a question for Parks and Rec. Can you hear me? Hello? Good evening, Don Norris, 1379 and 80, uh, Chair of the Safety Security and Election Committee. Our committee meets bi-monthly, and uh, our next meeting is next Tuesday. Uh, two members of the committee and our board liaison were not able to attend the last meeting, but we muddled through with them. Um, 
Initially, we received Dave Wisman's report and talked about a couple of the odds and ends. The report is, for the most part, what is published in the Echoes every month. So uh, we'll look, we look at the numbers and ask some questions. We have three guests in attendance. Uh, Dan Tester, he is our property inspector that roams around the valley. Zach Compton, the lead deputy, uh, came in with information about dogs being tied outside in, in harsh weather with no shelter or protection from the weather. Some of those dogs that were tied out, I mean, literally were chained out with chain heavy enough you could pull a car with. So um, we are going to review our rules relative to Dearborn County so that we basically, the rules within Hidden Valley with pets being left outside uh, match what the county's rules uh, reflect. So keep that in, in uh, keep it in, in line with that. Uh, Dave Wisman and Zach uh, also were there and we had some discussion concerning a problem of long-term parking within the valley. What they are finding is cars that get parked in the pool parking lot, Willie's parking lot, uh, other parking lots around the valley and they get left there for days, weeks, whatever. Um, to give you an idea how, how bad this is, we actually had 10 abandoned vehicles in 2021. So uh, what, we, what we've discussed, we still got to try to come up with a way of setting it up, is if, for example, if I have a bunch of people over to my house for a party, and I don't have parking for all of them, can we park some cars up in the full parking lot, for example, and just let the, let the POA know that they're going to be there? That way the, the deputies aren't wasting time, you know, what's this car, what's this car? So we'll see if we can come up with a, a, a system, work with the POA office to come up with a system to, to do that. Um, there have been ongoing discussions on pedestrian and bicycle traffic. And um, as a committee, we believe that more rules probably won't solve the problem. We've got lots of problems with people walking on the wrong side of the road bicyclists on the wrong side of the road and and also the pedestrians and the bicycles not yielding to some extent to uh, vehicular traffic. So we think at education. So, uh, you know, little uh, messages in the echoes and things like that may be our best solution to that because everything else we've tried doesn't work. Um, last year, our committee submitted a list of stop signs that we shot thought should be removed. Um, we have some stop signs in some very strange places in one area, the area of, of Lakeview and Longview and Lakeview and Green Tree. Uh, they're about 200 to 300 feet apart within that 100 yards area. There are eight stop signs. Yeah. Um, we also have some areas where the stop signs are not being paid attention to at all. Um, recently, I just, there was a uh, thing on uh, social media about somebody going through the stop signs on Alpine at Rosemead just recently. And um, recently I stopped, parked on Rosemead and just did a little impromptu survey. During that time, um, 14 vehicles passed through that intersection. Only one of them stopped. Wow. That was me. <laughs> okay. Um, besides that, for example, Rosemead at that intersection there, the two stop signs on Alpine, fine. One's going downhill, one's coming uphill. If we have bad weather, slippery conditions, and so on, that's a problem. People aren't stopping there anyway. So this is the kind of stuff we're evaluating where where we can make uh, you know where it makes sense to have stop signs and where it really doesn't. So we're still working on. Um, we also discussed continued underage operation of golf carts. We, again, we feel education is our best bet. Uh, enforcement by our, our, our deputies uh, may be necessary at times, but I think we just need to make sure everybody in the valley knows that they have, if they're not 16, they don't have a driver's license, they have no business whatsoever driving a golf cart. Even if mom or dad's sitting next to them, they're not supposed to be doing it. 
Last item is um, the committee. Our, our committee will be working with the board and other committees during the year to address several other, other subjects within HBL. At this point, point in time, there's really nothing to report. And so as more information uh, is available, it will be presented in uh, future meetings. Any questions? Yes. Microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Julie Mason, lot 2224. Um, talking about the stop signs, uh, just something that maybe you guys could help with education on. Um, on Alpine, there's a dip between High Ridge where that the road dips down from High Ridge and on the other side, there's Sand Sandemont and Bromhurst, I think it is. At those stop signs, when you're coming into the dip, you have to stop, but the traffic coming out of that dip does not have to stop. And it is a very, we live in that area and, and uh, pass that at those two intersections all the time. And we have to turn across traffic at those lights very often. And um, I can't tell you how many times we've almost been hit. Finally, a couple months ago, my husband was hit and um, did damage to his truck. And I heard somebody else also on social media complaining about a lot of children up there were high ridges and um, that, that there's no stopping at that intersection as well. But I think there needs to be some education about how those two stop signs work. And um, it's just very dangerous. People are not stopping. They think they just have to stop and then they can go on. But there's traffic coming up out of there that could cross in front of them. Um, it's just a really dangerous spot. And I just don't think people understand. I couldn't tell you how many times people have looked at me and kind of been like mad at me for turning in front of them. And I'm just thinking at some point, they're going to look at that stop sign and realize that they needed to stop there and wait for the oncoming traffic because it even says oncoming traffic does not stop so it, i mean in your educating process this would be a space that i would hope you guys can consider education about yeah that that has been a problem when the stop signs were originally installed there they were actually installed both both ways at both those intersections and as I understand it, I was not involved at that time when it was done, but as I understand it, the problem was is the people coming out of the dip, coming up to the stop sign, especially if the weather was slippery, they got stuck. Yep. And so that's why they eliminated those two, those two uphill signs. Um, I've considered recommending eliminating the the ones on the north side or high side totally on on alpine there on at brabhamhurst if you're sitting on brabhamhurst and wanting to turn left to go on alpine you can't see somebody coming over the hill yeah. and so not having the stop Correct. sign there could be a safety issue Correct. and so yeah it's 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 a weird situation um education may may be the only way i don't know of a good way because if they're con con conflicting problems for the record i think they're both appropriate just in my experience driving that space and how every day i do because i live very close to that and it's just a, a stretch that i always drive um i think they're both appropriate i just wish people would really understand how those stop signs yeah. operate yeah, they 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 have to be aware of the fact that the oncoming traffic is not stopping. So yeah, so yeah, we we we're continuing to look at this issue, um, reevaluating some of our recommendations just to make sure. And so uh, yeah, it's in the works. Any other questions? Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Paul. <laughs> I'm Rick Paul. Uh, the last time we spoke, I was interim director of the judicial panel, and I was voted in by the panel. Our last meeting, and I'm now taken over as 
for better or for worse, the chair of the judicial panel. Um, this was one of the few peaceful transitions of power <laughs> that has occurred in our world as of recently. <laughs> And for that reason, I just needed some backup. And I invited Bruce Plashko, who was the former chair. Is that the way it went? Give him the microphone. Bruce has served at least six years, maybe seven, as the chair of this committee. I've learned a lot from him. He shows respect for everybody who comes in front of the committee and he can also at a uh, hearing finish it up have everybody listen and then say i respect you but we're denying your appeal and that's how i would like to present it his main thing has been approaching these things in terms of education if we can so for those reasons, um, we were thinking of celebrating his history of teaching that group and working hard. You don't get a lot of people thanking you on that committee. I should say, oh, you came to a appeal. And they don't write you back and say, oh, thank you. Or they don't write you back and say, thank you for setting the fees on my citation. <laughs> But I would like to thank him. And uh, if you would, uh, I'd appreciate if you'd step up and uh, instead of giving him a microphone. Nice job. With the help of uh, our city manager and, of course, Mr. Gannon, I would like to prevent this, present you with this certificate. Uh, it says, your courage matched only by your stupidity. <laughs> Let me say a few words. The, uh, what happened, a little history lesson. Um, I had a conflict where I could not go to the meetings after this fall. So I asked uh, Rick if he would take over as chairman, and he did that graciously. Now, what you have to understand is sometimes when you make these decisions, uh, things don't turn out quite the way you want them to. But this is the exception. Uh, Rick has done just a great job, and I think we need to commend him on that. And uh, that and the other thing is we work closely, obviously, with the officers. And uh, they're, you know, think about it, they're in the same position that we are on this committee. And you have to make a decision sometimes about harshly enforcing a rule or do you want some mercy involved? And we've always tried to, to do that. And uh, so I, you know, I think our officers do a great job on that level uh, as well. And I hope that we will always continue to do that. Thank you. We have, uh, nice, Rich, you did, a, you did a great job there. We have one important piece here and that's right at the end of the meeting and I'll try to make it as uh, short as possible. We have attracted a um, very good person to uh, join the judicial panel, hopefully. Um, Gary, are you here? Gary Wolmoski, there he is. We'd, we'd have a picture of him back. Gary's been a member of the of Hidden Valley for 19 years now. 
He's also a Vietnam era army veteran. And he's very active with all the veterans organization, but some insight as to his character, he's on the veterans court in Dearborn County. Do you know what that does? Many of you probably know what the veterans court does. They put counselors with veterans who are having problems with drugs or other violations. And if they succeed in that court, then it's taken away. Uh, he's also an expert in the transportation business. He has everything from barges in Houston, which he has moved to working at Zurich and Kansas City for 20 years. So he knows everything about transportation. He currently consulting and what he does there is he's either an expert witness or he goes to trucking companies by invitation and gives seminars on the upcoming rules and regulation for truck safety. I got to know Gary um, when he was working with us at the Aurora Food Pantry. And our goal was to provide weekend food with kids who were on free breakfast and free lunch. They got all their food from school and they were having problems on the weekend. As you can imagine for many reasons, uh, parents shooting up or people unable or people in jail. And he still continues to do that. So he's a man of great character. And I believe he's the grief counselor at Crossroads. So he's a perfect guy in my mind for the, for what the judicial panel does. And I, in order to get on the judicial panel, we were talking about rules earlier, and it was thought to be very special when the POA was found and their bylaws written. To get on the judicial panel, you not only have to be approved by your current panel members by a majority vote, which he did get unanimously, but it's, it's very interesting if you read this. All new members have to be approved by all the major committees. The lakes, parks, um, lake trails, whatever that function <laughs> committees have, golf course, yeah. they have to approve that. And he was also unanimously approved. So I would like to ask at this point, if you guys uh, are ready to go, I would encourage you to approve his position on the judicial panel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Gary, sir, congratulations. Would you be kind enough to spell your last name so we can get it right in the minutes? Unless it's up here and I don't see it. No. no. Okay. Gary with two R's. Okay. That's one I had wrong already. Already. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations. The guy I invited. Hey, Gary, not everybody will get this, but Jean Kuya. Jean Kuya. All right. All right. So, any old business? Any new business? Motion. I don't know where where I should have come in sooner. Uh, my husband will tell you not to give me a microphone. <laughs> we'll, we'll let him take it away if he gets carried away. <laughs> um, I just wanted to kind of make a comment on the amenity fees that were increased. Um, I did send um, up my own letter to all of you, and um, I guess I'm a little disappointed that I didn't hear from anybody on anything. So I don't know if anything was noted or discussed or ignored or whatever, but, um, and I just want to say that I would have liked to have gotten some kind of reference that it was received and read. Um, I also want to make a comment about 
the input from your committees. Um, I'm on Parks and Rec and I'm speaking for myself as a member of that committee. Um, was disappointed that we weren't approached about some of these amenity fees. Um, the pool and the beach, for example, we've been talking about those for a couple of years, what to do with them, should they be increased, trying to track them. And that's just one of the things. Um, but we were never brought to the table to talk about what have you guys thought about your fees or um, what's going on with the budget for um, parks and recs. So um, just disappointed in that piece. Um, and I guess some clarification on why the money is needed, um, what the money's going for, um, how did um, how did the finance committee come to the fact that let's and all the fees weren't doubled, but some of the fees were just doubled. You know, we were expecting the five percent increase on our dues and could understand the need for that. But to double fees for the kayak rack, to double fees for registration of um, our kayaks, um, to take admission for guests to $5, you know, what was the thinking behind that? Was it, are there any, is there any information on that as to why yep. that happened? Yep. Um, um, from, you know, from my experience with judicial committee, um, when I was on it, from Bruce when I joined it and from Dave, when we were on that committee and citations were looked at, it wasn't about making money, that we weren't here to make money. We were here to educate, provide a safe place and keep the value of our properties. Um, I just feel like doubling <laughs> or increasing with the, the huge increase that the amenity fees got, um, was just more like, let's just do that. Um, it just, um, it just felt like it was a way to make money, not to offset operations, not to increase revenues. It was just a way to make some money. So I just kind of wanted some clarification on that. Okay. Um, also there were a couple things where fees weren't increased that I wondered why, and that was the fitness center. I don't believe those got increased. And I think another place you could increase would be citations. Um, I mean, the, <clears throat> excuse me, those citations start out at $50. If we need to make people accountable for what they're doing, such as running through stop signs, sometimes $50 isn't enough to make someone accountable. But if you raise that to $100, that's a little bit more coming out of their pockets. So I think that could have been very re reasonably done um, with the judicial committee. Um, and I guess my thought too, my last thought, um, I would rather see a higher increase to my dues because the dues, everybody pays dues. Well, if you can collect them. <laughs> I know not everybody pays them, but for the, the majority of us pay our dues. And we know that goes in to take care of our community. But to nickel and dime our amenities for, in this case, 10 and $20 our amenities, um, I think is just, just unreasonable when, and it's kind of like just putting it onto the people that enjoy the lakes or enjoy the amenities. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you do it with dues, it goes across to everybody. I mean, we all pay for this. And I don't use all the amenities. I don't use the basketball courts. I don't use tennis courts. Um, so, you know, there are things that some of us use and some of us don't. Um, we use the lake for kayaks, not for, you know, um, a pontoon, but um, I want everyone to have those things. But I just think in order to take care of us, this is our community and increasing dues would have been a better way than to double and some of our, you know, from, the shelters to pool parties to just so many amenities were hit that I was just shocked when I saw it. And I did look back and Ted also helped me look back into minutes and stuff. And it was mentioned back, I think October or December, in December that there would be an increase to amenities with a 5% going to dues. So my thought was, well, it'll just be a small 
you know, 5%, <laughs> like the dues. But when it's 50%, 100% increase. Thank you, my accountant. 100% increase. Um, it was just shocking, just very shocking. And on a personal note, we'll be taking our kayaks off the racks and taking them back home and we'll just haul them going forward. Okay. So we're just disappointed, just okay. disappointed. Let me, let me address and then the the board members can, can add on top. So first of all, I apologize that you didn't get feedback. We have had discussions about it and I'll share that feedback. Um, and, you, and there's a lot to unpack here. So let me try to hit yes, four, <laughs> let me try to hit four points. Um, so the decision was made during the budgeting process, which includes finance, listening to community members across the area, that we had $200,000 to try to come up with to balance the budget to take care of the community. So that's a high level number. The decision was made, and while you disagree with 5% on dues and, and the amenities, if we would have taken, if we'd have taken a 10% increase, because each one was 100,000, we would have had a different crowd in here talking about this, right? So we made the decision that we have we have some areas to play catch up on due to increased cost, due to over expenditures on some repairs that you, you had to figure it out and get it right. That was the $200,000 number. And finance said, if we can find 200,000 in revenue, that will cover us for 2022. It's not about making money. I don't know where we would take it because it all goes back to the community. So I'll, I'll respectfully disagree on that, but we have expenses to cover. And when we don't have a consistent process over time, we, we, eventually, we eventually get behind and you kind of have to make a decision. The, the board and the finance committee and everybody involved made the decision that for those folks that may not like the amenities increase, they're gonna they're gonna pay for what they're using. And just like you've decided to take your kayaks off, that's a variable cost you can control in your household. If we've hit everybody with 10%, people that don't use any of these amenities would fill this room up. So that's that's how right or wrong, that's how we got there. Now the other example I'll give you because you guys you guys mentioned and I understand because we went through it. Um, we made the mistake of not engaging the folks to touch all that, and we'll admit that. And it was in a spirit of moving too fast to try to get things done at the end of the year. So Dave and I have had that conversation. That's always been the process in the past. We will get back to that. But let me give you an example of reality. I'm going to use kayak racks. I'm going to use docks. And it's not, to, it's not to counter what you're saying, but it's to provide perspective. On kayak racks, we had a board member that's probably as financially prudent as anybody I've ever met that said, what are we doing with the kayak rates at that rate? That's like nothing. And a decision got made to keep the cost down, but what didn't get done is pricing across the communities to find out what is a fair rate. And so that's what we did across every single line item. So kayaks was probably from the start, mistake made too cheap for what we're providing. And if somebody wants to take them home, then they've got that pride, but you get to control that. Now, let me give you another extreme because not everything doubled. And this is factual because I went out and did my own research on top of the research we did. Our docks were at what, 250? I'm sure you guys have them with. We took them to 500, right? That's the double you're referring to. No, I think they went from 300. They, they were, were 380, something like that. 382, like I don't have like memorized. Something. It I don't remember exactly. It wasn't but, double. But it was significant because yeah. we've, we've heard that comment. Let me give you an example. Anybody know where Morse Lake is in Noblesville, Indiana, right? We didn't even use that in the consideration of the competitive spending, but if I had to do it all over again, I probably would have. It's 30 to 45 minutes away from downtown Indianapolis, similar to what we are to downtown Cincy. Um, cost of living in the area, probably comparable. They're probably a little bit more expensive overall. If you go to their website and look it up, $1,700 a year for a doc. And it's, it's not about trying to get as much as we can. It, it was about what is reasonable to, to like self-correct for work that was not done on an ongoing basis. So for the criticism, I probably the finance committee, staff members did, did, did a competitive shop to find out what was reasonable. Was everybody going to be happy with every line item? Absolutely not. But we did not feel comfortable raising everybody's dues 10%. And that's why we went down that path. 
What are you making a hundred thousand dollars on these amenities fees? based on the estimate? And I shared this. I mean, I may not have shared all the detail because we didn't have all the numbers, and I've been called out on that, and which is fine. That's part. Of, that's part of the role. But we knew we needed two hundred thousand dollars. Five percent against dues is a hundred thousand. The amenities increase based on estimated usage is a hundred thousand. That's how we got to two thousand. If we didn't think they were reasonable. We probably would have gone back to the conversation of it's got to be more than 5%. And now we have a different argument to defend. But guys, you have to understand. I don't know if everybody understands this. And I encourage you, if you don't understand the finance of this community and all the ins and outs, please come to a finance committee. When, when Kyle's here and, and Jeff's here, we'll be glad to share. We don't have all these magical answers, but we also know we can't keep up with what we've got with costs going up that you guys have all felt in your household. We thought the most prudent thing to do is get the budget right so we can pay for everything. Bear with me. But then people that are using the amenities, that's a variable cost for their household and they get to choose. And I, I would stand, I think, with the rest of the board, a 10% increase, we wouldn't have had enough chairs in this room. That's how we got there. And, and I can understand that. But I think it was there, the transparency wasn't there that we continue to hear about so that we yeah, would know this was coming. You know, we just and we it's learned not, about it all in this letter. Yeah. And it's not it's not a complete transparency because I could go back to the president's report. I talked about 100,000 and 100,000 where it's going to come from. And in fairness, we're not perfect. Um, I think sometimes people forget, and I'm, this is a plea to the people here and all the volunteers. We've got full-time jobs, most of us too, and we're going to make mistakes. But when we present as much as we have, we've been here for two hours with slides, detail, answering questions. I see Kevin shaking his head because he runs at VRUC, but we're never right. But we have to make some decisions. And when I say in a president's report, and it's in the minutes, there's $200,000 and here's where it's coming from. Shame on us that we didn't then take the list and show it. And Dave and I've had this conversation. I thought about putting the, the old price, the new price. Rich is shaking his head because we talked about that. I'm like, is that the right thing to do? Or are we going to create more concern? So we've learned from it. But at the end of the day, we needed $200,000 to balance the budget and pay and take care of everything we have. So were I apologize there any to the rest. Cost operating, save. I mean, were, were there ways you could have saved money? Sure, of course. Okay. We look at every single item. That's why I'm saying if you think you have a great handle on the budget, this has probably been one of the most difficult years. Is anybody facing increased costs at your house that are out of control or you can't get people to come do the work, right? It's reality. And we've done the best. Well, we have to look at it again next year. Of course but it's got to come from somewhere. There's people in this community, and I don't want to preach, that have said to me, why don't we have better roads everywhere? We'd love to, and Dave's got a task force working on, we have to pay for them. Like, I think sometimes people lose fact that we have to pay for absolutely everything we do. And if, if you don't, and I'm not challenging, but this is really for, and I felt this way, if you don't think it's right, get involved. Raise your hand for the finance committee and run some better numbers. I think we have one of the sharpest group of people on our finance committee. And thank God they stood forward and said, guys, we can't keep taking care of everything we have with the current budget. Let's start to get this fixed. That's why they're now working on a three to five year um, look at, at the accruals. So do we have everything we need in the future? So I'm, I'm trying not to preach, but we often get... Here's the complaints. I would love to come here and go, guys, thank you for, nobody wants an increase because I got to pay them too, but thank you for considering that we didn't take dues up 10%. That, oh, by the way, goes on forever and ever and ever because you never take those numbers down. That's just the reality. Any other questions? Back? A, a prime example of that is when we talk, a prime example of that and when I first came down here and on the finance realizing that we could not keep our deputies, we got to answer that and somehow make better benefits and maybe a salary increase, which we'll, we'll have to pay for somehow, yeah. but we got to keep our deputies. That's all there is to it. That's why a lot of us 
down here. Yep. It's for the security. Right. And 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 it's gonna cost cost everybody. And so we gotta bear the bear. Amy in the back. Yeah, uh, Amy Ayers, 2106. Um, just real quick, and this is why I didn't bring this up tonight because we were going to have a vote through the committee. Um, we have spent a couple years trying to see how many people are coming in and out of the beach, coming in and out of the pool, how many guests. We now have a system that it, every month, every committee is a system up, is a system going so we can get numbers. Yep. Miranda, how many Pete, how many guests did we have? How much money did you bring in? So in relation to what you're saying about finance, that is a topic of our committee at every meeting. I can show you every, you know, what how much money, how many people? A, because we have people on boats that can bring their guests. They don't get charged. But if you walk down, you're charged. We have to figure that out. That's so to, are we are Lots we saying ideas. hey well are we saying hey if you have a boat you don't have to pay for guests if you don't have a boat you have to pay these are questions that come up at our meeting that sure we understood and we understand that there should be an increase there should be an increase for the pool to rent it out for shelters if you think about it the shelter at the beach is fifty dollars you get that whole shelter a private restroom. And basically a private beach. Calm Air does it every year when we've been down there. For a what? Oh, and you get 25 passes. That's 50 bucks. But if you want the pool for two hours, we're at what? Uh, 250? We're at 250. No, 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 no. I'm saying if you rent the shelter, you get 25 guests. for the. There's no time limit. So these are things I think where Claudia is saying that, hey, we have been going over this, trying to figure it out. And then all of a sudden we get this in the mail and we're going, where'd you get these figures from? You know, 50 bucks for the pool or for the beach, well, but then- Have you seen the competitive analysis we did? No, I, no one just came okay, to we're us. glad to share it. No one, no one even All right. offered. I, guys, to I hear share. you. Hey, listen, hold, hold on. Hold oh on. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's not, let me, let me. Amy, let one me more make point, point, and then we're quick. gonna go. Can, we're gonna go around. Can I finish feet. though? May I finish? No, but I need you to get to the point. I'm gonna it's get to the 10. point. Why do we compare ourselves to other people? Why are we always going? Well, Morris, Geist, over. Here. Why we can do whatever we want. We are our own community. We can say, hey, we're not gonna do that. We can don't I, have to. Can I answer the question? Well, I, I was just making a statement. No, I understand. I mean, it, I don't like to. Fairness, be, I don't compare myself to Amy, other people. Amy, you stop. Shouldn't. Okay, stop. Let me yeah. let me let me respond respectfully. Why do you compare? Why do you compare other communities when you bought a home here? Best practice. I didn't. I didn't compare. Right. I I would argue most people didn't just go Hidden Valley. It's a wonderful place. There's never a heated board meeting. It's just paradise. And it costs like 50 bucks when we get all this shit. That doesn't happen. Okay. So we made a decision. We understand there needs to be more people to look, but I'm going to challenge anybody that volunteers because we're all volunteers. We cover a tremendous amount of content every single month, more than I wish we had to. It wasn't a surprise that every year in the fall, and we'll post the dates and everybody can come, that we're going through a budget process. We stood up here and, and shared high level budgets. I shared the detail behind dues increases and amenities. What I would ask you guys in return, if you've heard that and we're communicating and it's in the minutes and you don't understand something, raise your hand and come talk, get, get to work with us. I'm sorry everybody didn't get involved, but I would venture to guess, that's not fair. That's not fair. That's fine. You know I didn't get involved. You got to be kidding me, Scott. That's not fair. You said not everybody. Okay. Any other questions? I'll make just one comment. One more comment, and then I'm going to go around the crowd and share us. But, but, but here's the problem, Claudia. What you're saying is you're completely discrediting the people that spend months looking at it. No, I'm not. Right? No, I'm not. Because no, we didn't have the right people at the table. Well, you didn't, you did, obviously, you didn't have all the things. Okay. Well, and I acknowledge that up front, right? That we realize that you guys need yeah. to get involved. But, but all I'm trying to share 
is if you know a process is going on and we're missing information, raise your hand and say, we need more detail. Can you provide, can you provide the detail of what those amenity lines are? We had them. We didn't try to hide them from anybody. Uh, come on, one more question. Okay. Okay, motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll make that motion. motion. All in favor? Yes. Uh, aye. aye. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, Steve. Need your, need your John Hancock. I thought that Ah, okay. I thought we